if, if I fail at this, I fail at life. And, mm-hmm. and um, you know, that was a little dramatic probably, but, but in that moment I was like, you know what, this is a big opportunity. This is, I'm going to be able to learn a lot. Welcome back to the Millionaire Series of Master Life by Design. I am excited to be here with our new guest, AJ Maida. He is in Puerto Rico. That's right. <laughs> All right, Puerto Rico. He has an incredible story as an agent and what he's doing now internationally. So I don't want to steal all his thunder, but I do want to say welcome. Thank you for being on the show. It's exciting to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to, to do this. Awesome, man. Well, let's jump right in because you have an incredible story. I want the, our audience to be able to see and hear like what you've overcome and how you've built your life this way and how you've designed your life in a way where you have such great freedom and income and you can make an impact. So why don't you start out kind of where your story, where you came from, and then build us up a high level over the next few minutes on where you are today. Cool. And we'll awesome. Sounds good. So I uh, was born and raised in Michigan, just outside Detroit, uh, the suburbs north of Detroit. And, uh, you know, typical childhood, I would say, grew up lower middle class, uh, played sports in in high school and really enjoyed that, didn't necessarily enjoy the schoolwork. I was a a, a BC student, went to college, uh, dropped out of college. And uh, what, what really changed my life was in high school, my mom got me the book Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So, so growing up lower middle class, I've seen a lot of struggle. I've seen a lot of arguments that can come from the lack of money. So even as early as like eighth grade, I remember like there was a, this, this business class I was in and they did like this stock simulation. And I was like so intrigued by the stock market at that time. But I didn't really have an idea of what it meant to be a, a business owner or an entrepreneur, but I knew I wanted to be wealthy as, as early as I can remember of, of like seventh, eighth grade. So it kind of started to, to, I guess, become a little more tangible of what was possible when I read that book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, teaching you how you can essentially earn enough money residually so that you can live this life of freedom uh, through real estate. And I was like, this sounds really good. I, I figured out I wasn't going to make the NBA or the NFL. I wasn't that good. And uh, I was like, you know what? I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a business owner. So I ended up going to college mostly just to have a good time before I entered the real world. And I accomplished that, had a good time, got myself into some student loan debt, dropped out after five semesters and and got to work uh, running a a student painting company where we hired college students and taught them how to run their own painting businesses and really excelled with that, loved it. And uh, that was really the start to my entrepreneur journey. So that's, that's where it all began. I love it. I, you know, I love, I love that you said you weren't going to make the NBA. Look, I always say I'm, I'm five ten in white, and I got my <laughs> verticals not that great. So uh, my NBA yeah. dreams got shattered uh, very quickly. But um, yeah. what a great book! And who gave you that book, Rich Dad Poor Dad? Was it your mom? It, it was, yeah, it was my mom. You know, I, I wish I had it, like documented how all that happened because it was so long ago now. But she, she just must have known that I, I had an interest in business. So I remember she in my stockings at Christmas, she would put in like these these money magazines and they're the ones that had like the opportunities in the back, like for like gumball machines, vending machines, like that kind of stuff. More the gimmicky magazines and never really got much value out of that. But I, I loved them because it, it was showing me these opportunities as a kid. And then she she must have seen it like, you know, maybe checking out at the grocery store or something. Bestseller it came out around that time. Uh, and she grabbed it for me. And and that, that book just planted that seed, like, Hey, I can do this. That's awesome. You know, shout out to your mom for having yeah. that vision an incredible woman to feed, plant a seed and feed you towards the entrepreneur path. And my guess is she wasn't an entrepreneur. She had a job. She was on disability from the time I was, gosh, probably eight. So um, that's, that's a big reason, you know, money was, was, you know, not readily available uh, really a disability type income. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's, that's where it started. That's amazing. She, from the moment she saw that the seeds planted to what you've been able to produce. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit and how many lives you've have been able to impact around the world because of that, that one book, that one vision she had. So, so awesome. Shout out to her. Great stuff. All right. So you, you had fun in college, you had this vision, you had this business that was going well. Um, what happened to that business, the painting business? 
so so it was great you know and um you know it, it the college experience was amazing I, I definitely partied a little too much but it, it, it did two things for me it, it one as a college freshman I found this company called student painters it's mostly in the midwest and it's a student development company taught me how to you know market the business you know door-to-door -door sales taught me how to do painting estimates how to get back to customers lead follow-up hire employees, actually do interviews and, 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 you know, manage them and manage the job. So the experience was great. And uh, also I would drive home on the weekends to market that painting business from central Michigan university. I would drive home two hours to, uh, to market my business on the weekends. And, and during those two hours, um, a, a friend in college actually gave me a, a CD uh, by Hillsong United, a, a Christian worship uh, group. And that really yeah. convicted me of, of my faith. And, so I really came to know God uh, through my college experience as well, which was awesome and part of the reason why I dropped out as well uh, to get me out of that environment. So, so the student painter thing kind of just played a really big role in my life, giving me the confidence that I can be an entrepreneur, that I can succeed. And uh, I ended up staying with the company after I dropped out of college. I stayed there four years in Michigan, became general manager of the, of the state of Michigan, got entrepreneur of the year. Um, and, and Steve Acorn, the, the founder of that company, still runs it, and uh, his sons are now in the business, and uh, and one of the sons worked for me, and now he's like 30, running the business, helping the dad run the business, and it was just cool, uh, the experience of all of that. M more than anything, what, what I remember um, about that experience was someone believing in me, so the idea of mentorship, but the first year, you know, I just wasn't taking it as serious as I needed to. And then this kind of became a little bit of a theme early on in my entrepreneurial journey. And, you know, I was a freshman in college and the last thing you want to do in your second semester is drive home most weekends to, to you know, figure out how you make money for that summer. But you got to start getting the, the marketing going and, and the estimates and the sales before the summer starts. So, so you got something to actually paint. It was all exterior residential house painting. And uh, I, I just wasn't, doing enough I, I i wasn't doing enough and uh steve acorn sat me down before the season started and was like hey aj you only have six thousand dollars in sales and to give you an idea you're you're shooting for fifteen thousand dollars in sales at the time before the summer starts and you want to do at least about 50 grand in in sales for for the paint jobs that summer would be be good and you'd make like 10 grand you know as a college student back in 2005 that's a big deal so um, he's like, you, you know, if you don't get your sales up, you're not going to be able to open your business because, you know, there's equipment you got to buy and, and they have a credit line for you. So, you know, it's a risky investment to allow you to, you know, start charging on this credit line to buy your ladders, your, your paintbrushes, all that kind of stuff. And I told Steve as, as an 18 year old kid, if, if I fail at this, I fail at life. And, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that was a little dramatic probably, but, but in that moment, I was like, you know what, this is a big opportunity. This is, I'm going to be able to learn a lot. And if I don't start taking it serious and putting in consistent action, that was the lesson, taking consistent action, I, I'm going to fail at this. And then I turned it all around, got rookie of the year that year, did over $60,000 in production and, uh, and, and just got a free cruise to the Bahamas. So it's a bunch of college students going to the Bahamas on this cruise. It's the awards cruise, you know, tuxedo and lots of fun on the cruise. Um, so Awesome experience, man. Any college student listening to this, or, or if you got kids in college, like check out like uh, Student Painters Midwest. Uh, college Works used to be a big one, and College Pro, um, all all great companies for kids in college. That's awesome. And that's a bit. You said something really powerful in there. Uh, and for those of you that are watching right now, and maybe you're in a position where you have some success and you'd like to help other people, it's as a mentor your role not only is to teach and coach them, but to believe in them. And that's what your mentor did to you. And he was mm -hmm. believing in you and then boom, rookie of the year. And then, um, you know, going down to the Bahamas, you know, preaching yeah. the word of God, right? That's what you were doing. <laughs> not at that time. Definitely not at that time. <laughs> we'll try it about that and how your faith plays a role in your success. And, but let's jump in from there. After, how did you transition from that business? And then what did you enter into from there? Yes, yeah, so there was a, a little blip where uh, about four years into Student Painters, I got this opportunity to actually fly out to California, open a division for my friend's dad's company, uh, buying and selling scrap gold. It was when you started to see all these, you know, we buy gold signs popping up. This would have been like 2007, 2008, you know, gold skyrocketed in price. People were selling their old gold broken jewelry. 
And uh, that's what we were doing. We we're doing like these gold parties and uh, we, we launched a division, um, my, myself and my buddy out in LA in Orange County. And we got to the point where we were buying a lot of gold on a weekly basis, uh, had a team of reps helping us. And that lasted a couple of years. And then that kind of started just to fade away. So I ended up actually launching a division for student painters in California. There's a lot of red tape out there, a lot of regulation ended up, um, you know, having an okay first year, but not good enough to really be like, you know what, let's push through these, these hardships, these, these obstacles and make this work. It was more like an opportunity to me um, to be able to evaluate where I want to be long-term. So I ended up saying, Hey, you know, we tried it, but let's not do it again. And my wife and I decided to move to Charlotte, North Carolina on a whim um, out of California and uh, trusted that that's where we were supposed to be. So, so we moved there and I started a, a painting business there for about eight months. I was going to, I had grand plans to start this painting company, this professional painting company and, and franchise it out all across the country. And I discovered that um, it, it was a lot of, it wasn't the type of business I wanted to be in long-term. So I ended up breaking my leg in a four-wheeling accident while laid up on the couch read the book Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. Great book for mindset. Great book uh, to, to, to learn the, the principles and the foundations of running a real estate business. And that book taught me you can be a real estate agent, but run it like a real estate business. So I got my, my license a month later at the end of 2012. And uh, I've been a licensed agent for the last, uh, this is my 11th year. Wow. Nice. Nice. So, and you started out in North Carolina? That's right. Yep. Just outside okay. Charlotte. So let's jump into there. So at this point, obviously you said you were starting your business. You decided, did you have any debt at this point? Where were you? Where were your numbers, net worth, private debt, yeah. business debt? I, I wish I could have, tr you know, been mindful enough to track it back then. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say, you know, I'm not the most organized person. That's definitely not my strength. And uh, back then it was definitely worse. Now I track net worth month over month, track all my income streams. I, I discovered it's a lot more fun to track when you actually have a positive net worth and, and multiple streams of income. When you're like, got one stream of income or zero and you're going in debt and you're like, oh, I, I don't want to look at that. However, if you're in that position, it's okay. You should start tracking it, start building those good habits. And, and it will encourage and motivate you to, to start going in the right direction. Whereas I was spending the money as it would come in, you know, my wife and I, um, so I had gotten married when I was about 24 and, uh, we, we were going, um, into debt, nothing crazy. You know, we weren't trying to live a lavish lifestyle, but the income wasn't great. So we just were, you know, had credit card debt, you know, car loans. So when I first got into real estate, uh, I, I would guess with car loans, probably 40,000 in debt. If I had to guess, my wife was a nurse, so we had some income, uh, but when I got into real estate, it, it was putting everything on credit cards. It was, I hired a coach on a credit card. I put my marketing on a credit card. Um, you know, I sold my mountain bike, my prized mountain bike. I love mountain biking. And I Me sold too, my, 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 yeah, it's, it's so fun. And I, I didn't want to sell it, but I did, you know, I cashed out the six grand I had in a Roth RA. Um, so, so I sold stuff to, to, to really float me that first year in real estate and, and I put on credit cards and, and, uh, Got get into real estate. I, I discovered it, it was it was harder than I thought. So my first my first year, I was like, I'm a, you know, my goal is to sell 100 houses. And what I realized, what I had in student painters, and this was another lesson that I learned, and that I like to help real estate agents with. It's if you get into a new business, real estate in my in my situation, you need to have a mentor, whether it's a, a paid mentor, a coach, or or really just somebody that's there to help you that is maybe just doing it out of the goodness of their heart. But, but you need to be following someone that has a, a duplicatable, repeatable process. And in Student Painters, Steve taught me that if you pass out 500 flyers, mailbox to mailbox, you'll get one lead. If you knock on doors for an hour, you'll get one lead. When I got into real estate, it was like, you can do open houses, you can you know call expired listings for sale by owners, you can network, you can um do do like uh, these craigslist ads you can buy zillow leads and, and all these various things but but there wasn't like metrics available nobody was doing it at a high enough level to show me their you know repeatable results that i could you know rip off and duplicate uh so i i struggled the first six months because of that but then i heard about this real estate conference signed up 
it was in Las Vegas, put it on a credit card and flew out there and uh, was all excited, you know, saw the people in the front, you know, dress nice. The ones in the front are all the ones that pay the most for the tickets and are probably in like the expensive one-on-one coaching I discovered. And, and you can just tell that they're dressed really nice and they know everybody. And I, I was in like the mid, I got as close as I could with my, with my class of ticket basically. Cause I, I'm a, I'm a friend to learn front of the room learner. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And, and I was just looking at them. I was like, man, I want to, I want to get there. And as I'm got my, I have my leg crossed, I'm taking notes. I'm excited. I'm like, I'm going to get home. I'm going to make this happen. And it kind of just hit me. I was like, well, what's going to be different? You know, I, I know what I should be doing, but I'm not doing it consistently. My focus is scattered. And I, I noticed kind of during all of this note taking and just deep reflection about where I'm at in life, I noticed I had a hole in my shoe. And, you know, it was at that moment, it's like, what am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm you know, in the greatest country in America, you know, I'm, I have the opportunity to, to, to be a real estate agent, to, to make money. Um, but yet I have a hole in my shoe and my wife's at home working as an ICU nurse, you know, midnight shifts, 14 hour shifts. Like it's, it's hard work. Like people are literally, literally dying, but yet I'm not consistently doing the sales activities that I I really know I should be doing. So I was like, you know what, that, that was, that was, that was the decision I made that, that changed everything. Hired a coach again on a credit card. I was all in burning the bridges. But got back and at the end of my first year, I had over 20 <clears> listings. My second year, I sold 36 houses after only selling six my first year. And, uh, you know, you can do the math for your area. You know, if, if, if you're the average price point in your area is 350 grand, let's call it a $10,000 commission check. Um, you know, it's it's a good income selling 36 houses a year as an individual agent. So, um, so that would have been 2014 when um, things started to turn around for me. Wow. Man, so much gold to unpack there. Uh, you know, I resonate with you because I was also in thirty, forty thousand dollars credit card debt. It seemed like that's all I did was swipe my card. Um, but one thing I love that you said is like you have to start tracking now. You can't manage what you don't measure. And if you're if you're afraid, if you're watching and you're afraid to look at you know how much debt you have because I was there too. At some point, you got to stand up and look in the mirror, kind of like the David Goggins moment, and just say, like, what the F? Like, I got to look, I got to focus, I got to stand up, because the only way to defeat it is to stand up to it. And so you got to know where you're starting. The biggest mindset shift that worked for me, and I help a lot of clients, is that we get so caught up in where we are. And if you do that and you focus on that, you're always going to be there moving forward. It's until you start focusing on where you're going, right? That point B that you start to get out of point A. And most people, they're so focused on where they are instead of where they're going. Successful people focus on where they're going. They make decisions based on where they're going. And I love that you, even though it's on your credit card, it's like you had the vision, you had the faith that like, hey, I'm going to go find someone who has the results that I want, who has the system that I want, who has a proven track record and can measure along the way to help me get to where I want to go. So I hope you save those pairs of shoes with the holes in them, man. That would be awesome as a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it is, it's important. So let me let me ask you this because you know, I'm going to say biasly here as a coach and an investor, but what was the mindset when, and when you bought into the business coaching, what was like, and how much was it, but what was the mindset you had behind that? Yeah. So at the time, the, the program that I was in had two levels. One was a thousand dollars a month. The other one was uh, six fifty a month. The only difference was like the, the, I guess the, the quality of the coach. Um, I think that the more tenured coaches charge a thousand a month um, and the, the newer ones charge 650. So I, I went with the ones that were 650. It was still one-on-one coaching because what I was really looking was for accountability because the, the program had the duplicatable repeatable process. So, so I saw that and I was like, I just need someone that I'm meeting with on a weekly basis to hold me accountable to the actions that I'm learning to take and to critique, you know, tweak what I'm doing a little bit. So, so I got the 650 a month coaching and more than anything, what, what changed was I was able to, to have that blueprint. You know, I think it's important that you have a blueprint because when, when you lack clarity, it, it's hard to take action, you know, consistent action forward. Cause you don't know if the action you're even taking is even the right action. So you don't have that, 
that faith that it's going to pay off because how, how could you? you you you're not following a, a path that is clear you know it's kind of like you're wandering around in the woods hoping that you're going to find you know your destination and that's where I was until I had the coach and then they're like you know what you just need to prospect for sellers lead generation lead generate for two to three hours per day make 100 to 150 contacts per week and just do that practice your scripts become a listing agent and uh and that's what I did. And, and that's what changed everything. So having that laser focus and having someone to hold me accountable to those, those key metrics that I needed to hit. All right. I love what you were just saying there. The accountability aspect is so important. Um, when I, you know, when I coach real estate agents, you know, one of the things that we have is we have them measure everything at, that they're doing, every action. How many doors are they knocking? How many, you know, quality conversations are they having? How many people are sitting down talking with you and walking through the funnel to measure? Because if you don't like, like Steve shared with you, if you do an hour of door knocking, you're going to get one lead. So we want to know, like, if you go out and do door knocking as an agent for an hour each day, how many doors do you have to knock in order to say, I'm going to get one deal? Because if it's like 600 doors to get one deal, you know, hey, if I want to sell two deals a month, I got to knock on 1200 doors. And it's like, it's proven. And so we, I always like to help people, um, really measure along the way so that we have that, um, that whole process there. So really powerful. And I love that you were like, you knew what you needed. The number one thing I always tell people is, you know, know thyself. And you're like, I needed the accountability you spent, you were about to spend basically eight grand for the year on coaching. And my guess is you've made a little bit more that year than eight grand, right? Yeah, the, the first year I, I basically broke even <laughs> after all my expenses. But the second year, I mean, prices have prices have like doubled in Charlotte since 2014. <laughs> so, so my commissions right. would have been much higher. But but I made a, almost uh, two hundred thousand dollars in commissions. Uh, you know, as a 27 year old, uh, second year in real estate. Come on. It's like, how many of you would invest eight to $10,000 or should I say eight to 12,000, even if he, they did a thousand a month deal mm -hmm. to make 200 grand. It's a no brainer. Sometimes people get so caught up in how much coaching costs, but they're missing how much you're going to gain. And we get it. It's, an, it's about faith and, you know, faith in yourself and you're betting on yourself. Um, but I love that you had the clear game plan. I always tell people, if you're not a hundred percent clear, you're a hundred percent unclear. Right. It's like if I told you I buried $10 million out here in Idaho and you can have it if you can find it, you're going to be digging forever. But if I said it's, hey, it's in my backyard, three feet down from the back right post, you're going to know exactly where to go and you're going to take massive action. And so, like you said, if you're not clear, you're not going to move. And so that's why having a coach or having someone that has a proven system that can really help you, that's where you fold time. And you, and you make a lot more money. You accelerate over time. So love that. All right. So you crushed it your second year. You dove in, you invested, you learned the game. Um, then, then what happened? Did you build a team? Did you continue rocking? Did you move? What, what happened there? Yeah. So I, I started to build a team. I, I was at Keller Williams and, and they are really busy on attending teams there. So I got, um, I got that vision and I had that vision from reading Millionaire Real Estate Agent before I even got into real estate. So I was like, you know, okay, I'm going to be an individual agent, learn the ropes, and I'm going to start to build a team. So, so pretty quickly, I started to build a team. I started to build it my third year, quickly got up to selling close to 100 homes a year with a small team, making around $20,000 a month, and uh, just continued to acquire debt because now you're, you're financeable at that point. So I got a, I got a Range Rover used. I got a used BMW. I ended up getting a brand new F-250 turbo diesel pickup truck that pulled our, our toy hauler RV that we ended up taking around the country. Um, bought, bought a house that was definitely within reason. It was, it was below our means. Um, so that the cars were not smart purchases. The house was a good purchase, but you know, I, I definitely got to the point, if you include the house, you know, over $300,000 in debt. Um, so, and that's what I see a lot of high income earners do. It's like, you start making more money and, and lifestyle inflation happens. So you just keep going farther in debt and, and you're always just trying to keep up. And, and that was certainly the path that I was on. Um, 
you know, a lot of it probably looking back is, you know, just things that I wanted as a kid and, and um, you know, as a young adult that I never could afford. So I, I started buying these different things and, and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of times too, you, you start to acquire things when you're making money just to, to prove your worth, you know, when you, when you grow up with not a lot of money, you know, you want that nice car so others can see it. Um, and I was definitely guilty of that. I found, I found, I found once I became a millionaire, it was like, I, I, I saw a meme. It was so funny recently. It was like, you know, you've made it once you start wearing Costco clothes and like literally right now the shorts I'm wearing are from Costco. And, and I live in a beautiful community with a Ritz Carlton. And like, we're talking like multi-millionaires, billionaires are around here and half the time I'm wearing Costco clothes. And like, cause you just start to, you just, your, your mindset just changes around it, but I still love nice things. You know, I just got a nice new watch for father's day and um, but it puts things that I like and not what society tells me that is, is what I should have or, or what I should aspire to. So, so yeah, so I just went farther in debt, making good money, um, still learning, but essentially just stuck in the rat race is, is where I was. Nice. I call, I called it more bougie rat race. Is this what I was on when I started making that kind of money? Yeah. You know, I love it. You know, I love that. A couple of things there. One, I read the book Millionaire Next Door. Have you have yeah. you read that? Oh yeah, Thomas J. Stanley. Yeah. yeah. And I love what he says in that book. If you guys haven't watched or read it or listened to it, I, I highly recommend it. It is fact driven and numbers driven, but if you can get through that, it's a good read. But the biggest thing mm -hmm. I took away from that book was he's like, You have neighbors living around you that are probably worth 10, 20, 30 million dollars, and you have no clue. You think they're just some average person, right? Because they're not doing what, like you said, society keeping up with the Joneses, which I made a video on that and we might post that above here. Um, but with that being said, it's like, I've seen people and I did it too. As I started making more money, I'd buy stuff. And you learn as you get older that, and more wise with your money that who are you trying to prove? Like, who are you trying to impress? And so um, my wife and I, we drive a, a GMC terrain and a F-150, you know, use cars and we, could we go get a Lambo? Sure. Would that be smart? No. Right. A lot of times what people are doing is they're investing in liabilities instead of assets. And if you think about it, everyone's played the game Monopoly. Could you imagine playing Monopoly and not buying any property? Right. Like, how would you win the game? And so many people were doing that. And so if you're here listening to AJ, you know, the biggest thing that I could say is, you know, and I know you're going to get into this here in a moment, but you got to make sure you're buying assets. If you want financial freedom, you have to buy assets that produce you money or build a business where you could be able to build it up and sell it for a multiple and then go and invest that money. So anyway, love everything you're saying, man. Um, I, just total agreement. I feel like we're on the same path. And so anyway, go on. So you, uh, you built this team, you're stuck in this rat race. What was the, after a couple of years of this, what was the mindset? And then what did you do from there? Yeah. So I had been in real estate for four or five years and I, I had a coach. I, I always had a coach, different coaching companies. I like to switch it up. Um, keep it fresh. For, uh, I'm always looking though for that coach that I'm just going to be with for the rest of my life. I think that'd be cool too. Kind of like Michael Jordan's relationship with his coach. Uh, was it Tim Grover? Yep. Um, but, uh, but I'm always, I'm always in coaching. So I had a coach at the time and he's, uh, he basically said to me, um, so I was sharing some goals with him of how, you know, I want, I want to expand. I want more leverage. It, essentially what I was saying without saying it was like, I want a way to create a business so that I can eventually step out of it and have a true business. If, if you um, want a second Robert Kiyosaki book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the next one is Cash Flow Quadrant. And it's the idea that uh, most people stay in the employee, self-employed side of it. And real estate agents would definitely be considered self-employed. The right side of the quadrant is going to be investor and business owner or business owner and investor below that. And, and I wanted to be a true business owner. A business owner can step away from their business and their business keeps making money. Most real estate agents, even if they have teams, they're still just self-employed. They take a trip around the U.S. like I was able to, and we can get to that for a year. They're going to come back and they're, they're going to have nothing. Their, their, their business is going to fall apart because they're not there as the operator. I wanted a business that I could completely leave and it keeps earning me money and it keeps growing. And I discovered um, running a team just wasn't the right solution. 
Mm-hmm. And I was kind of sharing that, that, that goal of mine with my coach. I want to expand. I want to build bigger and, and maybe even open my own brokerage at some point was my mindset. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it one more year um, doing what I'm doing with this brokerage. And then I'm going to go out on my own. If, if I don't see the growth I'm looking for, I'm going to start my own brokerage. And uh, he was just like, hey, AJ, before you do anything, because I'm open-minded, um, he said, before you do anything, just watch this video presentation on this company called eXp Realty. It was super new then. 2017, we had 2,400 agents. Uh, now we have almost 90,000 uh, worldwide. And uh, what I saw was they had a unique model where the cloud-based, no offices, and it gives half its revenue back to its agents for helping growing the company. And it also allows its agents to earn stock for free. Stock in the company, we're publicly traded on the NASDAQ. I actually got to go in 2020 during the closing bell on NASDAQ in Times Square, amazing experience. And uh, I was like, okay, so there's, there's three streams of income, selling houses, earning revenue share, if you help refer a good agent to the company and, and stock. I was like, this, this, is, this makes sense. And I also look through, I look at opportunities to filter, is this going to get me closer to my financial freedom goal? For, for me, I call it true freedom. True freedom is location freedom, time freedom, financial freedom. Uh, better said financial freedom so that you can have time freedom and location freedom. And then I discovered a fourth freedom over the last few years. And this is the one I'm really pursuing now is just mindset freedom. You know, being able to be present with your family, being able to just you know, not have um, worry, you know, just, just live with a joyful heart um, and, and all those good things. So I, I saw with eXp, it was the platform that had the best shot at me achieving this, this lifestyle freedom that I was after through its revenue share model. Because as a real estate agent, you're stuck on the transaction treadmill. You're in the rat race. If you're always trading hours for dollars, you'll never have that true freedom. And the revenue share model showed to me that I could earn residual income without working if I build this revenue share team, refer a handful of agents to the company, help my revenue share team grow. So I made the leap January 1, 2017, and I had a five-year goal to create financial freedom through that model. Uh, It's a five-year plan, and it happened in just 18 months. 18 months in, I was already at my dream financial freedom number, making 25 grand a month in residual income. My wife and I uh, sold our house in Charlotte, traveled the country for almost a year in an RV, spent three months snowboarding in Breckenridge, Colorado, Um, went all around the Pacific Northwest, all throughout California, just just had this amazing, amazing trip. And what was cool, what I realized, it really hit me about halfway through the trip is my income just kept growing. More agents just kept joining my team, whether or not I showed up and I realized that I was now a true business owner because it's growing with or without me. And, uh, and that taught me an important lesson that you always want to be on the right side of the quadrant as a business owner or investor, uh, which, which is where I spend all my time. And I will never go back to the left side of the quadrant. I was never an employee, never, never no one would hire me today probably, <laughs> but, uh, but I was always self-employed, but that's not where you want to be. That's where you can start, but you gotta be thinking, how can I shift over to the business owner, uh, investor quadrants? And uh, yeah, so it's just been continuing to grow my team through EXP Realty for the last uh, six, seven years now. Um, I'm one of the top guys in the company, top 15, have over 6,500 agents in my revenue share organization. Uh, I mean, my team's selling over 2,000 homes a month. Uh, if, if you look at it that way, I have agents in 10 plus countries all across the US, Canada, uh, and, and yeah, about, I think it's about 13, 14 countries now. I haven't looked in a little while, but I, last time I looked, it was 12 plus <clears> countries. <throat> and it's a, afforded me a lifestyle where I can work as little or as much as I want. So, so my current work schedule is 10 to 15 hours a week. We'll work when I want, doing the things I want to be doing, just helping lead my team, partnering with new agents. And uh, you know, if, if I were to sum up my current job description, it's I help real estate agents create financial freedom within three to five years. That's that's my passion. And what I love about business and what I love about your mission with your podcast and your coaching is that you're all about this financial freedom. And, and, you know, you having similar ages of kids, yours are three to five, three and five, mine are one and three. It's like, man, like if we can just help young parents create some level of financial freedom. So maybe they're not completely financial free, but they got some residual income so that they can maybe 
pull back on their hours a little bit or one spouse can quit their job like you only got little kids for such a short period of time and, and I'm just so present to that right now being in that 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 season of life it's like man like I've I seen both my kids their their first steps like both of them like I'm essentially a stay-at-home dad like my kids are downstairs right now that I'm gonna see right after this I'm gonna give them kisses I'll probably do a little more work and you know then we're gonna golf cart ride around the community like so I just want to see people live their authentic lifestyle if it's 50 grand a year residual that they need to live their dream lifestyle awesome if it's five hundred thousand dollars a year to live their dream lifestyle awesome but uh it, that's what i that's what i help people figure out and do through through real estate now um by partnering with them at exp that's amazing and like you said getting to the left side is so important uh, if you want that time freedom, you want the money freedom. And like you said, I love the location freedom because that's important too. Um, there's different levels. And I always talk about, there's a, I did a video on, there's the survival letter level, excuse me, where it's like, Hey, you have passive income, mm -hmm. pays your bills. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But you'd have to sit in your house all day and do nothing. Right. Like <laughs> right. that's cool for probably the first week and then you get bored. And so, yeah. It's then, then that next level is the next level is, uh, we have it, the four S pyramid, it's totally, um, blanking, but I always call it the lifestyle. And so what's your lifestyle number. And so mm -hmm. I love that. So let's let, I want to jump in because there's so many things I want to ask, but let's back up your wife and you were traveling. You didn't have kids at the time. Correct. Correct. What was, how much were you guys spending to live your lifestyle? I know you were RVing around the country, but how much a month were you guys spending for your lifestyle at that point? Yeah, that's a great question. And my buddy, um, I also have a guy that partnered with me at EXP. He did the same thing. And him and I always talk about this because, so he traveled with his, uh, his daughter, who's now a teenager and his wife for a year in a van. I was in a 36 foot travel trail and then upgraded to a 42 foot motor home. So like I was doing it luxurious, which was like, not him. He wanted to be in a van and like, you know, national parks. I was like in these really nice, like campgrounds, different type of style, but we both did it. And we we're always like, so amazed at how, how little amount of money, relatively speaking, you need to live this amazing lifestyle that most people work until they're 60, 65, 68 to retire, then do it. Uh, we were probably spending at the time eight, 10 grand a month he tracked his and he spent half his time in a van and half his time in like nice airbnbs because he really appreciates fine dining and airbnb and nice airbnb so he was spending some money uh he was at like uh, i think he said 14 grand a month and and it's like it's, it's just not that lot not not that much money like when, when i talk to like top producing real estate agents independent broker owners people selling hundreds of homes a year and i say you know for for you to to partner with me three years from now, how much money would you be need, how much money would you need to be earning per month residually for you to consider it the not just a good decision but the best business decision you've ever made in your life? And these are people already making several hundred thousand dollars a year, and the number one answer I get is ten k a month because because what they have is they have a good income but they don't have any time, and and they're very present to that reality and they know that with ten grand a month. It's going to pay their living expenses, and now they're financially free. So um, my, my, my dream number was 25 grand a month, hit that in, in, in 18 months. But on 10 grand a month, I was able to travel the country full time in an RV, like a dream. Like as soon as my kids are a little bit older and can actually sit in a car for a little while longer, we're going to do it again because it's like a very epic lifestyle if you're into that kind of stuff. Like we loved it. And, and um, I learned this from Tim Ferriss, but it's this idea of, of dreamlining your lifestyle. I call it vision casting now, where you just write down all the things you want to have, all the things you want to do, and like who you want to become, add up what it's going to cost per month. If you want a million dollar house, let's call it a $5,000 a month mortgage. If you do want that Lamborghini, let's call it a $2,000 a month car payment. And add up everything. If you want to fly first class, fly private, take these amazing vacations, add it all up what it'll cost per month and get your number. Most people's number is 10 to 15 K a month. Like, yeah. you know, and like, I, I know you know how to teach on it and uh, it, we can, we can help people get there. Like, that's like what, what we can do through real estate. It's such an amazing opportunity. And I think people just don't have the information, you know, they, they, they don't know it's possible. Like it's like a foreign world. 
So yeah. And they generalize. They're like, oh, it's going to cost me a hundred grand a month. It's like, right. Well, yeah. what, we used to, when I worked at Tony Robbins, we used to, he had an event called Wealth Mastery. And what we would do mm-hmm. is we would literally have people do that same exact model. And you, you often come up, it's usually probably anywhere from 50 to 70% less than you think. Right. Oh, I need 50 grand. Oh, it's 25. You know, and it's funny because I asked that because I have a, one of my best friends, very successful in network marketing and passive income that way. And him and his wife and their uh, three kids are always traveling in first class hotels and everything. And I asked him, I said, you know, hey, you guys were gone this entire month. You, you got multiple properties, you know, multiple lifestyle to pay your bills, travel first class and do it right. You know, how much does it could does that lifestyle, you know, not that you would do it every month, but how much would that be? And he's like, honestly, like 40 grand a month. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh. And now it's like, yeah. you know, we've had 40,000 plus months and, but it's like, how do you do that passively? You know, and that's what everyone, you know, you're going to need to sit down and get that number. So um, I love that my wife and I, before we had kids, I wanted to travel. She likes her space. So we didn't get the RV and do yeah. it. And for, we looked at a, a, a class and I was like, babe, come on. <laughs> but you know, happy wife, happy life. I hear. So, yeah. um, all right. So <clears throat> you were making 25 grand a month and then your team started to grow. What was the dollar amount? It would grow every month as your team started expanding because you, you, gave them a provable system that you used and that you started teaching others to use and they passed it down to their team. What were you making an extra two grand a month, three grand a month, five grand a month? What, what did you see that growing each month roughly on average? Yeah, I actually really never looked at it like that. Um, quite like that. I'll, I'll say my, my second year, I, I made about 266 in, in revenue share. And my third year, I made 675. So it, it was a big jump. Um, yeah. Month over month, it, it consistently grew. You know, some months would, would be like a huge jump. Some months might be the same or a little bit less. Um, but year over year, uh, since I've joined the company, it's it's grown dramatically. Um, every year has been a dramatic jump. Um, so it's it's been life changing. It's it's allowed me to really create wealth. Um, both from a financial perspective and a time perspective that, that I can imagine. You know, I'm, I have a great lifestyle. I'm able to save 80 plus percent of my income and invest it. So it's a, it's a good model. It's good. A, it's really been good. So if you're an agent watching this and you're, you're at like a Keller Williams or somewhere else, I'm not downplaying that, but if you're looking to get on that left side of the quadrant, like AJ was talking about and be able to impact other people's lives and give them an opportunity to take the cap off, not just because I know as an agent, you can, you could sell an infinite amount of homes, but you have only so much time. So there really is a cap, but when you can go out and impact other people and train them, now you're duplicating your time and you're removing that ceiling. And so if you're on that left, if you're on that right side and you're looking to be on the left side, we're going to have in the show notes how you can reach out to AJ and, you know, just kind of find out more about what he's doing and his model and how he can help you and his team could help you really expand to that left side. So we take the cap off and your income can grow, you know, like 400 K a year, like his was. Um, all right. I want to get a little personal with numbers. What was your best month ever in business? Total dollar amount. Over 250,000 net over $250,000 from teaching people how to do what he's done and use a duplicatable system. How many people watching could use an extra 250 grand? (laughs) I know I could use an extra 250. How many have never made 250 grand in a year, right? If you haven't ever made 200, if you haven't even made a hundred grand in a year, it's not a bad thing, but I will say, I'm going to say this from a spiritual perspective, I have an incredible pastor at my church here out in Boise. Um, Totally volunteer. Doesn't take a dime from the church. Him and his wife, 18, I think it was 12 years ago, built a business um, and their business is doing $50 million a year. Now you're not making that. That's gross, right? But they're very successful in their own right. But the one thing he's always preaching to us is that you have to have a spirit of excellence in everything that you do, especially in the marketplace. And that is what's going to separate you from the next agent or the next investor. When you walk 
I was just speaking about this at AJ Osborne's event out here in Boise, the CRE circle. And I was telling him how, when you can live in that spirit of excellence, that's when your life goes from here to here, because people want to do business with those that are outstanding, not those that are good. There's so many people out there that are good marketing. If you talk to any marketer, they're going to tell you, there's got to be something that causes you to stand out. And when you walk in that spirit of excellence, right, and in, in the marketplace, that's when things flow. That's when things shift. That's when people are attracted to you. And more and more people or business and opportunities come your way to really be blessed. And so, um, dude, I love that. That's awesome. Um, here's it. Let's go a little bit deeper. What, because of the work you did and the ability to have a system that's duplicatable, what's the best year? income wise that someone on your team has ever had uh so yeah, mo most of the agents that are in my organization have a combination of income so it's going to be their revenue share which is the majority of my income now and then they're gonna have their probably the real estate business uh you know transactional sales and then some of them might also even have a coaching company coaching other real estate agents so if, if we're just looking at the residual income piece uh through revenue share um best year uh multiple over seven figures and uh some probably over 1.5 um yeah. one pro one or two maybe over 1.5 but, but definitely at, at least i would say five over seven figures uh last year wow yeah. if you're an agent or if you want to be an agent or if you, <laughs> you you're in a position like look at that. Like if you're looking for coaching, you go to the next level. Like I, I I'm a believer, obviously I'm speaking biasedly as a mindset coach and an investor, but it's like, how many people could love to do 1.5 million? My pastor always says this, who's on the other side of your life working, right? Like who can you bless on the other side? Because your life works, you're functioning well. And the only way that you're going to get better at what you do, how you can optimize your game in the marketplace, how you can be able to just really take ground and territories, having someone that's walked the path and has proven that they can do that with other people. And you have multiple people do multiple seven or multiple or over seven figures, excuse me. And so it's like, how awesome. So if you're in, you need to get with AJ. And anyway, <laughs> I don't want to go into promoting you Thanks, too much, man, man but excited for you. It. Um, all right. So now you guys are living where? You're not in an RV. Where are you guys at? Yeah. So our, our goal when we got in the RV was for it only to last three months. And then we we're going to end the trip in Laguna Beach, California. It's always been our goal to move there. We, we've lived in Newport Beach for a little bit, Laguna Niguel, which is in Orange County as well. And uh, just love Laguna Beach specifically, not necessarily all the craziness in California. Um, you know, I, I tend to be more conservative. Um, I'm, I'm a Christian and there's definitely some, some political stuff going on there that would, wouldn't go along with my beliefs. So it's not that I love California from a political perspective. Uh, however, I love Laguna Beach. It's like seven miles of pristine coastline, cliffs breaking into the ocean, uh, whales, dolphins, like, you know, just, I love the ocean. So we we're going to move there. And, uh, I had a friend reach out and he's like, Hey, you know, we're going to, we're going to go to Breckenridge, Colorado for the winter again, him, him and his uh, family had been full-time in an RV for a couple of years, spent the previous winter in Breckenridge, Colorado in, in their fifth wheel. And uh, my wife and I were like, we're already on the road, you know, Laguna Beach is definitely gonna be more expensive than what we're currently doing. Let's just live in our RV for as long as we want to. So we, we passed through Laguna Beach. We spent six weeks there. There's a great RV park in Newport Beach, right, right by Laguna Beach. I spent six weeks there. Then we uh, made the trip to Breckenridge, Colorado, and the first first second week I was there, I, I met a guy who had a real had has a real estate team, but was living in Puerto Rico full time, and then living in uh, Breckenridge uh, part time. And he shared with me that there were some unique tax advantages by moving your business to Puerto Rico. So we made uh, the move to Puerto Rico uh, June to, to 2019. Um, so we've been here four plus years now. Um, just live in a really nice community with a lot of really neat entrepreneurs. Uh, and it's just a great quality of life. And what are the tax advantages of living in Puerto Rico versus the big land of the U.S.? <laughs> the big land of the U.S. So 
Uh, it's a U.S. territory, so that's what's cool about Puerto Rico. It's like you don't need a passport. It's, it's all the same currency. Uh, I would say the, the more rural parts of the island, it's mostly Spanish-speaking, uh, but in more touristy type areas, um, definitely a, a lot of uh, Puerto Ricans speak English as well. So it's a great place to vacation if you're just looking for good vacation, but not trying to go all the way to like Hawaii or Mexico. So so plug there for the tourism of Puerto Rico. Uh, but yeah, four percent. So it's called Act sixty now. You it's it's uh, essentially you can move your business here and then export your services um, outside of Puerto Rico. That you can't like come here and start a car wash and and that qualify. You gotta actually export your services. So it's great for money managers, accountants, CPAs, lawyers, consultants, like, you know, coaches, YouTubers, podcasters. Um, yeah, so so yeah, so 4%. So there's no federal tax. Uh, you pay 4% flat tax on, on your business income. That goes to Puerto Rico to help the economy. That's awesome. I have a lot of friends there. Um, one friend, uh, Jarek Robbins, he's been out there for a yeah. while. Um, so I'm yet to go visit, but, uh, now that you're out there, maybe I might have to, um, but awesome. I love, I love that you guys are out there and, you know, raising your family out there and honestly saving a lot of money. So if you're in a position mm -hmm. where you're making a lot of money and you're like, you have that tight location freedom, Puerto Rico might be a, a good place for you. Um, I know the prices have increased over uh, yes. <laughs> last few years. I had a client of mine who was there like five years ago and, uh, and you know, he had to be there and because of the tax situation he was in, but it's a win. It's a huge win for everyone. Plus it's beautiful. And I heard it's safe mm -hmm. too. So, um, all right. So that's where you are today. Let me ask you, where? what about your investment portfolio? Where do you invest in real estate? I know you, you've sold real estate. You've built teams around real estate. Do you own real estate? Yeah, so so right now I have two Airbnbs. Um, one's in Puerto Rico. It's, it's where I used to live. We decided to keep it and, and rent it out. Uh, it's a short-term, mid-term rental. Uh, we have a, a really nice home in Michigan where I grew up in a really nice quaint downtown area. So that's kind of like our second home. And, and we also Airbnb that out. Um, not loving necessarily the, the the more active real estate type investing. I'm, I'm more transitioning to just straight passive investing. So I have a, another single family home that, that right now is about to be a long-term rental. Other than that, I'm in index funds and syndication deals. So, so the syndication deals are a combination of multifamily, self-storage, car washes, and hotels. I love that. And for those that are listening, um, diversification is huge, right? Not all eggs in one basket. And you said syndications. For those that don't know what a syndication is, can you just explain that really quickly as a passive investor? Yeah, so a lot of them you need to be a, a, an accredited investor, meaning you make two hundred and fifty a year or have a net worth uh, over one million. Uh, but a lot of these deals offer a portion of what they're the capital they're trying to raise to non-accredited investors. So it could be an opportunity worth looking into. Uh, essentially, you have a, a group that identifies an asset that they believe they can add value to, increase what it's worth, and sell it. Usually, projecting five to seven years out would be you know the, the typical model based on what I see and what I invest in. So they're, they're raising capital from outside investors so they can go to a bank and say, hey, we raised this capital. This is our down payment. And then they're looking to get a loan for the, for the rest of it. So you're just a, with a big group of investors. I'm considered a limited partner. It's 100% passive. They would be the general partner. They're the one you know, finding the deal, doing the renovation. If it needs renovation, getting a new property management company if that's needed. And, uh, and I, I love the, this type of investing because the cash flow. So yes. not only do I have upside when it sells, but I'm also getting monthly or quarterly uh, distribution. So that's cash flow. So in my mind, uh, I'm always thinking, how, how do I make a seven figure year income through my investments? So that's, that's really what my primary business goal is right now. And, and, and it's going great. I, I love the real estate industry. I'm, I'm looking to learn more and, and maybe someday play a more active role in, in the syndication space. But right now, just enjoying um, raising two little kids and, and investing passively. I love that. Mailbox money, putting your money to work. Um, you know, in the Bible, there was a story of three 
people they were given one was given five talents the other was given two and the other was given one and the the person that gave them that right they went away and the per when he came back he said all right what what did you guys do with my money and the one who made five get, got five he went out and multiplied that right and got another five and, he, and then this, the one that was given two he went out and multiplied that and got two and so he said good you know good job to them and then the one who only had one was given one they knew he was a shrewd you know businessman we'll say and they buried it and when he came back they gave it back and he's like you know basically summarizing you know he's like basically like you didn't do anything like you didn't do good. All right. And so you want to, if you start making good money, your goal is to start investing it to go out there and multiply it. Right. You're, you could tell, you can tell if someone's successful in life, they're good at what they do by the fruit that they've produced in their life. Obviously, AJ's produced a lot of fruit, not just for his own life, for those that have been on his team and that has worked with him. And so I'm always looking, do they have fruit in their life? Do they know what they're doing? Are they out there multiplying or are they just getting everything just for themselves? And so I love what you're doing, AJ. I love, you know, just how you're making an impact on people. Um, and so just absolutely awesome. I want to ask before we wrap up with some rapid fire questions and then wrap up is what's your vision in 30 seconds? What's your vision from this point forward for you and your family, your business? Where are you looking to go from here? Yeah, so I'm financially, I'm, I'm, I'm set at my current lifestyle. So the trajectory that I'm on will continue to increase my net worth at a, at a pretty good pace and that I feel comfortable with. Uh, so, so financially things are great. You know, I would love to eventually have, you know, a second home somewhere in the mountains, like a ski in ski out type home. So we yeah. our, our family loves to snowboard and ski. Uh, well, hopefully the kids do. I got my son his first snowboard uh, this past year. Uh, he got three runs on the bunny hill and I mean, he, he's turning three in July. So, oh, that's so he, awesome. He, yeah, he's ready to go in for the muffin uh, that we promised him pretty quickly. So <laughs> but we, we hope they're into it too, you know. Um, so and we'd love to have a house in Laguna Beach at some point. So so lifestyle wise, we'd like to split our time um, Pacific Northwest, maybe um, Laguna Beach and uh, probably the Colorado Mountains somewhere in Puerto Rico. So that, that's kind of the, the big grand vision lifestyle wise. Um, in, in terms of like giving back, you know, one of the things that I, I work on with, with my life coach, I'll call him is, you know, I, I want to find something that just, you know, grips my heart and, and calls me to serve at such a high level. Cause I, I feel like God's blessed me in so many ways through, you know, just financially and, and, and the different talents he's given me um, and, and abilities and, and all that and, and just so much. And I just feel like there's, there's something there that I, I know he's going to use me in a big way and I haven't found that yet. So I'm kind of seeking that. Maybe it's, um, you know, my wife just showed me a TikTok the other day. It was, you know, this, this, um, this, this, this boy that was like two in Africa, like drinking from this well that just like got, mm. you know, built, you know, that day. And, and it was like the mom helped, you know, like they're just celebrating. I was like, I was like, babe, like we, that could be us. Like we could be going to, to remote places in the world and, and, and doing like wells. Cause, cause she feels the same way. We have a heart to give back in a big way. So, so we don't know what that is yet, but I think at some point as our kids get to the age where they can, you know, grasp what God has given us from a financial perspective and, and the ability to have time to, to serve, uh, we really want to bring them into that spirit of giving and, and service and, and do something, you know, I like extreme sports. I'm, I'm, I'm all in or all out type of person. So I think it's going to be a, a big, like exciting adventure um, to, to give back and serve may, maybe even around the world. Um, so, you know, I, yeah. I think, I, I think I tend to, you know, just being open, I, I tend to go towards the more selfish um, desires that I have, like to live this, this lifestyle, to, not that I'm into like luxury, like I love luxury things, like no yeah. doubt about it, but, but I just want to like get away with my family and go in the woods or like, you know, do this, this snowboarding trip for like three months and like not talk to anybody. Like, like that's like freedom to me. But like, I remember like the story you were talking about the talents, you know, the one that buried the one and did nothing with it. Not, now that I have like the financial part of it and I'm investing that, um, I think of it, that story more like the 
the literal talents that God's given us. Mm -hmm. And if I just take my financial independence and do nothing with it, serve others and serve the world and just live this, this dream lifestyle, which, which I'm definitely going to live, but if there's not a giving back and a service piece, then I'm the one that got scolded by, you know, the, the, the master or, or um, you know, the business owner in, in that case, because, because I literally did nothing with the talent that God gave me. So, um, so, good. so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get so through good. that part. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a journey and I'm excited to see what God reveals to me through that. Um, cool. So, yeah. So, nice, man. I yeah. love it. I love it. All right. Well, let's wrap up and let's get some rapid fire real quick. What's one book outside of Rich Dad, Poor Dad that changed your life? Man, there's so many good ones. I love Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. It's it's an amazing book and it's a quick read. That's a really, really good one. Um, I love the bit. I love the book um, Deep Work. I think that one's Cal Newport. Um, but but if you're like, I would like to recommend this one if you're newer to personal development or not a great reader. It's called Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Mm. And it's a great book, bang for your buck. It's like 600 pages and it's like $10 on Amazon. And Jack Canfield is one of the founders of Chicken Soup for the Soul, if you remember those books back in the day, uh, one of the co-authors. And, and those books were just really inspirational stories that were easy to read and, and would, would inspire you. So it's, it's all the principles to success and each one's just a few pages. So it's easy to digest. You can just read a few pages a day and get something out of it. Um, so I love that book. Uh, but, but if, if we we're to look at really like changed my life, changed my life, that instilled the foundational principles. Um, it's definitely the rich dad, poor dad, and then uh, thinking grow rich would, would be the two. So good. So good. All right. Last question. And that is what's one piece of advice that's changed your life? One piece of advice that's changed my life. Uh, this goes back to eight, eighth grade, ninth grade basketball. Our, our coaches had this list of quotes, I think, in the back of like the, the little basketball yearbook pamphlet they put together. Um, there, there's two, two quotes, and, and I remember to this day, um, the, the first one is obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off the goal. So that, that just gave me the mindset. You got to be laser focused on that goal, and, and obstacles will just fade away when you stay focused. And then the other one, just very simple, Midwest, uh, if the cows don't get fed, they don't get fed. Just having a no excuse attitude. And, and I think if you live by those two principles, then you can achieve anything that you really want. Awesome. All right. Well, AJ, if people want to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. They can check me out there. AJ Mida, M-I-D-A, Instagram, Facebook, shoot me a friend request, DM, um, any, any of those social media platforms would be, would be cool. Awesome. Well, AJ, thank you so much for being on. You gave a ton of value. Hope you guys enjoyed this. So you're, you did it. You smashed this man. So great stuff. <laughs> Thanks, thank man. you. For those of you that are watching for the first time, make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification, and then also give it a thumbs up, share this and comment below. What was your biggest takeaway from AJ? And if you're watching for the first time, make sure you reach out to AJ if you're looking to get to that next level or maybe even take advantage of his real estate coaching and the lifestyle he has. So AJ, once again, thank you for being on Master Life by Design for the Millionaire Series. And we appreciate you. We'll have to have you back soon. Sounds good, man. Awesome. Thanks, man.